Hello everyone, welcome back. So, let us continue our discussion on mechanics of solids. We are in week 2 and this is our second lecture, right. So, let us quickly review what we have already discussed. Now, if we have 2D plane, what you can see here, 2D stress field and we can identify the normal stress and shear stress. If you look at the nomenclature, we have sigma xx and sigma yy. These are the two normal stresses and we have tau xy and tau yx. And we have also proved that tau xy is equal to tau yx, right. And if you look at the subscript, we have the first subscript that defines the plane and the second one defines the direction along which this stress is acting, okay. So, once we define this stress field, after that our next task is to find out stress components acting on a plane defined by the angle alpha, right. So, we have this plane and over this plane we will have a normal stress and we have a shear stress. So, this is sigma n and this is tau n and we have also derived the expression for sigma n which is equal to sigma x x plus sigma y y by 2 then plus sigma x x minus sigma y y by 2 cos twice alpha plus tau x y sin twice alpha and then tau n is equal to minus sigma x x minus sigma y y by 2 sin 2 alpha plus tau x y cos 2 alpha. So, that is equation number 1 and equation number 2. So, these are the two expressions that we derived in the last class and also we solved for a particular value of alpha. So, if alpha equal to 45 degree, so we can find out what is sigma n and what is tau n. So, for 45 degree angle, sigma n is 26 and tau n is minus 2 obviously with the respective units which I am not writing for the time being. Now, the point is if we change this value of alpha which is here, then we can find out the component of stresses acting on that particular plane. So, if you have say alpha equal to 60 degree, right. So, cos 2 alpha will be equal to minus 0 0.5 and sin 2 alpha will be equal to 0 0.866. Then we can find out what is sigma n and what is tau n. The value of sigma n on this plane is 15.93 and the tau n if you estimate you will get minus 5.73. Similarly, we can find out if alpha equal to 30 degree, sigma n is equal to 37.59 and then tau n is equal to 5.93. 
if alpha equal to 75 degree sigma n is equal to 6.41 and tau n is equal to minus 7.93. So, I leave this as a home task you please verify whether you get these values. The only task is you have to put the value of alpha here in this equation in these two equations and we know the values of sigma xx so it was 20, sigma yy was 16 and tau xy was 8. So, those are the values for which these combinations of sigma n and tau n are derived. Now, what is so special in this entire analysis? The point to be noted here if we change uh, the value of alpha we get sigma n and tau n acting on that plane. Then if we vary alpha from say minus 180 degree to plus 180 degree, then what we will get? We will get the complete combination of sigma n and tau n, right. That we will do in a minute. We will see how this uh, sigma n and tau n they actually change as we keep on changing the value of alpha. Before we do that, let us just quickly discuss why we need to do that. Just imagine you as a designer, you design a structure then obviously because of the external forces acting on that structure at a particular plane you will have sigma n and tau n, right. If you take the example of a beam which is simply supported and if you apply a load at the middle then obviously the beam will bend. And then if you go to every section, obviously every section will have some normal and shear stress. Not only that, at a particular point if you just rotate the angle of the plane that is the orientation, you will again get a combination of sigma n and tau n. Now, uh, as a designer what is the main task that also we discussed in the previous uh, lectures that we have to select a material which will offer sufficient strength against the applied load. We call it capacity and the applied load uh, that demands a certain level of stresses to be fulfilled by this uh, structure. So, we call it a demand. So, it is a play between demand and capacity and so long your capacity is more than the demand, your structure is always safe and we define safety by a factor, a non-dimensional factor, we call it factor of safety. Now, this analysis, these two equations actually gives you the clue if we keep on changing the value of alpha, then uh, we will see the variations of sigma n and tau n. Then from that analysis we can identify a plane along which sigma n is worst or tau n is worst. Then what we will do, we will select a material so that it can withstand that level of stress or maybe a combination of sigma n and tau n. As we progress in this course, you will see how a material fails and uh, we will define certain failure theories and then you will see those are basically combinations of normal and shear stresses and then we have to select the material accordingly. Now, uh, so if you plot the variation of sigma n and tau n as you can see on your screen, so the blue line is the sigma n and the pink line is tau n. So that is the variation between, so this is minus 180 degree and here we have plus 180 degree that covers the complete range of different combinations of sigma n and tau n that we are going to expect. Now, the point here to be noted are the peak values of sigma n. So, you can see if I mark it, so this is the one peak value and this is another one. Obviously, those are the two maximum values of sigma n. What are the minimum values? You can see here and there. Now, if you consider any arbitrary plane, say this is the plane we consider for a value of alpha. So, if I mark it here, this is the value of alpha, say alpha star, for which we can identify the value of sigma n and tau n. And as we keep on changing alpha from minus 180 to plus 180, we get the complete variation and not only that the point to be noted here is corresponding to this maximum sigma n if you mark. So, you get a point 
where tau n is 0. Here also if you mark the same point and the last one is here. So, the most interesting thing is for every alpha there is a combination of sigma n and tau n. That is the first point to be noted. Second point is where sigma n is maximum tau n is equal to 0. And the final observation is where tau n is maximum. Let us quickly identify say for example, here then here then obviously here and for all of them you see if I take say this example. So, we have this is the point we have a value of sigma n. Similarly, uh, if we take this value, so we have corresponding sigma n somewhere here. Here also the same thing and uh, one more optimize here. So, this is the point. So, where tau n is maximum sigma n not equal to 0. Now, these two observations are extremely important always remember the plane on which sigma n is maximum. So, you can identify. So, this is the plane here is the alpha value somewhere close to minus 150. So, we have to exactly find out we will do that um, as we progress in this course maybe uh, minus 140. Similarly, we get somewhere here maybe 40 exact value we will figure out, but these are the planes where sigma n is maximum they are important for design. Along these planes we have only normal stress acting and that is the maximum value of normal stress. So, if you select a material we need to identify this maximum value of normal stress the material can withstand. So, we can find out from our analysis what is the maximum level of uh, sigma n that we expect and accordingly we can take a call. Now, for the other case if we come here obviously, where tau n is maximum sigma n is not equal to 0 and therefore, we have to make a combination of sigma n and tau n. We have to consider both. We cannot just uh, separate out tau n just because it is maximum because that particular plane will always have an associated value of sigma n. Now, the question is how we are going to plot this. So, uh, you can write a small MATLAB code and this is the example how to plot this case. So, you can also go through this code that will be a good practice for you to get familiarized with MATLAB coding because as we progress in this course we will also use MATLAB for solving a different solid mechanics problem. Now, the question that comes in our mind now is if we combine if we combine sigma n and tau n and derive single equation to to model the 
variation of stresses we get the complete info for design. So, here we have sigma n and tau n both of them they are basically function of you see sigma x x sigma y y tau x y and alpha right and therefore most likely we can combine them and have one equation where if we look at alpha then from that uh, we get the behavior of sigma n and tau n how they actually change their values as we keep on changing alpha. So, that is a task which we will do in the next class and we will see how we can actually combine them and using a single plot we can solve uh, this problem and we will also quantify the angle of the plane where this sigma n is maximum and where tau n is also maximum. So, these are the tasks that we will take up in our next class in this series. Um, in the meantime, what I will suggest that uh, for different values of alpha, the task I have given to you, you please solve the expression and find out the value of sigma n and tau n acting at plane defined by this angle. So, sigma n tau n acting at an angle alpha that you derive for different values of alpha and make sure that you also get those values. With that, let us close here. We will continue in our next class. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.